If you came into this business since 1980, which is almost everybody, you have only seen declining interest rates or ultra low interest rates. People tend to say, well, that's what it's been for 40 years. That's normal. That's what it's going to be. But no, you have to recognize it. That's why I call this sea change, because you have to recognize this is an important pivot. Some people come up to me and say, yes, you're right, interest rates are, are low. Nobody has said this is a major change, as you say it is. But, you know, if, if it's the change I think it is, then what you should have in your portfolio going forward can be very different from what it has been. And, and so far, uh, I have not had uh, resounding support for that position. While you may have heard the name Howard Marks before, it's important to understand why his words matter and why you should listen to him. Howard Marks is a distinguished figure in the financial world. He co-founded Oak Tree Capital Management in 1995 and has cultivated one of the largest debt operations and investment firms globally. In a recent episode of Bloomberg Wealth with David Rubenstein, Marks imparted invaluable wisdom. One of his key messages is the caution against attempting to predict the market's every twist and turn. A reminder that even seasoned investors like Warren Buffett have made their share of missteps. Marx has always sounded the alarm on the perilous path that many debt-laden companies are currently treading. Furthermore, he has vocally criticized lawmakers for their high-stakes brinkmanship concerning the debt ceiling. In this thought-provoking interview, Howard Marks shared eight profound principles that underpin his investment philosophy. Now, let's embark on a journey to explore these principles in depth and uncover how they can seamlessly integrate into your life and investment strategy. Starting with number one, navigating the unpredictable. Know where you stand. You know, what I say is we never know where we're going, but we sure as hell ought to know where we are. And if we, can, if, we can, if we can be analytical about what's going on in the markets today, that has implications for tomorrow. In the ever-changing world of investments, Howard Marks reminds us that while we can't predict the future, understanding our current position is key to preparing for what lies ahead. It's like checking the map before embarking on a journey. Imagine you're an investor in the midst of a bull market, and stock prices have been steadily rising. It's crucial to assess the current market conditions and the valuation of stocks to make informed decisions. Overlooking this assessment might lead to overvaluing assets and being unprepared for a potential market correction. Number two, the two types of forecasters. John Kenneth Galbraith, who said there are two kinds of forecasters, the ones who don't know and the ones who don't know they don't know. Marx echoes John Kenneth Galbraith's wisdom, highlighting that there are those who admit they can't predict the future and those who falsely believe they can. Embracing uncertainty is the first step towards making informed decisions. In the stock market, countless analysts and experts attempt to predict the future performance of individual stocks or the market as a whole. However, history has shown that even the most renowned forecasters can often be wide of the mark emphasizing the unpredictability of stock price movements. Number three, avoiding the adrenaline rush. Rates were, the Fed funds rate was zero much of the, probably the majority of the time in the 09 to 21 period. And that's inappropriate. It's, it, 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 it stimulates, you, sh you can't live on a, a shot of adrenaline every morning for 13 years. Reflecting on the Federal Reserve's policies, Marx emphasizes the dangers of relying on constant stimulus. A sustainable financial strategy isn't about adrenaline, it's about steadiness and resilience. During an extended bull market, where stocks are continually reaching new highs, it might seem like easy money. However, this exuberance can lead to speculative bubbles. For instance, during the late 1920s, the stock market experienced a period of irrational exuberance eventually resulting in the infamous market crash of 1929. Number four, from easy money to stormy seas. And I think that when, we, when you go through a period when it's super easy to raise money for any purpose or no purpose, and you go into a period when it's difficult to raise money even for a good purpose, clearly many more companies are going to founder. Marx paints a vivid picture of the shifting tides in the financial landscape. When capital flows freely, companies thrive. 
But when the funding dries up, even good businesses can struggle. It's a reminder that economic cycles are inevitable. Consider a scenario where interest rates rise significantly. Companies that relied heavily on debt financing during the low interest rate era may find it challenging to service their debt. This situation could result in a wave of corporate bankruptcies, impacting stock prices and investor portfolios. Number five, the perils of playing with defaults. Um, it's clearly worrisome. Uh, n there's never been uh, there's never been a bankruptcy of the U.S. or a, company, a country like it, so we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, right now, the U.S. dollar is what's called the reserve currency of the world, and we get to print them. And we can print, in the short run, we can print as many as we want. And as long as that's the case, uh, we're not going to go under. Uh, uh, it's like if you have an unlimited checking account, you can pay your credit card bills without, uh, without limitation. Um, we just don't know where it's going. That's the problem. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, people, uh, this business about using uh, a, a, uh, a default as a negotiating tool is very, very dangerous. Marx cautions against using defaults as political bargaining chips. Just as he warns of trying to predict the market, he advises against gambling with the financial stability of a nation a high-stakes game with potentially catastrophic consequences. In the stock market, uncertainty can arise from various sources, including political events. For instance, a government shutdown or a political standoff over economic policies can lead to increased market volatility and potential stock price declines. Number six, preserving the golden goose. We have, it's the golden goose. We have this reserve currency status because the dollar is the safest currency in the world and the U.S. economy is the best. Why would you jeopardize that? Marx emphasizes the significance of the U.S. dollar's reserve currency status. Protecting this invaluable asset ensures stability in uncertain times. Why risk something so precious? Investors often seek the safety of U.S. assets during times of global economic uncertainty. This demand for U.S. stocks and bonds can bolster the U.S. dollar's value and drive foreign investment into the U.S. stock market, underlining the importance of maintaining a stable economic and political environment. Number seven, investing wisdom. Embrace imperfection. And, the, you know, uh, Warren Buffett always talks about Ted Williams, who batted 400. That means 60% of the time he's, he was out at the plate. Uh, the great investors are right 60%, 70%, maybe 80% of the time. If you're the kind of person who has to be right all the time, you shouldn't be in it. Warren Buffett's reference to Ted Williams hitting 400 serves as a poignant reminder that even the best investors aren't right all the time. Success lies in accepting that you will make mistakes along the way. Successful stock market investors understand that not every investment will be a winner. Even the most accomplished investors like Warren Buffett have experienced losses. It's essential to have a diversified portfolio to manage risk and not let the fear of occasional losses deter you from long-term investing. And number eight, the contrarian corner. Uh, but, you know, uh, when the markets are doing well or when we're doing well, then people have that co cocktail party conversation. When the markets are doing poorly, I just stand in the corner. Marx humorously notes that nobody seeks investment advice when the markets are in turmoil. However, there's wisdom in realizing that challenging times can offer valuable lessons. So don't just stand in the corner, embrace the opportunity for growth and learning. In bull markets, it's common for investors to share stories of their successful stock picks and investment gains at social gatherings. However, during bear markets or periods of market turbulence, investors often become more reserved and may hesitate to discuss their portfolio losses. This highlights the cyclical nature of investor sentiment and the importance of maintaining a disciplined investment approach regardless of market conditions.